What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and today's video is a Cult of the Lamb starter guide, and in this video we're going to talk about the basics of the game, mainly the Crusades, aka missions, as well as base management, and a few tips to get you started. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave your thoughts down below in the comments, leave a like on the video, subscribe, hit the bell, all of that cool YouTube stuff, and then check the box for all the nice, helpful links like Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon. Start off the video, we're going to talk about Crusades, aka the missions. This is what the game throws at you at the beginning, alongside the base management, and really the game is divided into those two parts. It's Crusades, get a bunch of stuff, come back, manage your base, and then go back out on a Crusade. Or runs, or whatever you want to call them. So we're going to talk about the Crusades first. So, in terms of the combat mechanics... Actually, let's start with the Crusade itself first. So the Crusade, when you start it, you get a weapon and a spell, aka a curse, given to you. And you can switch these throughout the run once you find the appropriate shops or whatever, but you always start with one of these, and it's random. So whatever spell you get, random, and then whatever uh, weapon you get is random. There are, I believe, five weapons, at least that I've seen. There's dagger, sword, axe, claws, and hammer. And they're all good for their own reasons, but I feel that the axe and the sword are probably the two best, and then the claws might be third. And then I'd say maybe the hammer is one of the worst. I got a hammer right now. And the uh, the dagger is hard to use just because of how combat plays out, but it's not bad. So any weapon can be good. Let me just say that instead. But in terms of the mechanics, it's, it's very simple. You... Press B or whatever circle, depending on your controller or keyboard or whatever, to roll. And you can actually roll out of most stuff. So I would suggest getting very comfortable with that because you're fully immune when you're rolling around and stuff. So if things get hairy, just smash roll. It's okay. It's got a bit of a cooldown, but yeah. Other than that, it's, it's really simple. There's no power attacks and stuff like that. So you just press the X or square button, depending on your controller, and you hit stuff, you roll around, and that's it. Y or triangle, if you're on controllers, are your curses. You can hold and aim these and then release them. And there are a few different forms with different effects. So this one's a fireball type curse. There are a few different variations of this. There's a tentacle one, which makes a line through the ground. There is a sword one, which powers up like a magic sword and then it swings in a, like a half circle. And then there is a divine judgment spell, which is a small AOE that has different effects. So all of these are pretty cool, so you pick your favorites. I personally think the axe is the best weapon right now. It's, you know, between damage and range and speed and all that, it feels like it's, you know, really good, at least for my playstyle. And then for curses, I like the fireballs and divine judgments. Those are my two favorites. So I cleared out this level just to make things easier for all of us. And in terms of the weapons, for the hammer, it's a big AoE, as you can see and you can aim it after you charge it up. So you gotta kind of predict where they're going. Big AOE, biggest damage, slowest speed. Um, the dagger has a fair amount of knockback, so it's actually kind of hard to do a bunch of damage with it because you have a bunch of knockback, it's got the quickest speed and the lowest damage. So I think the easiest way to deal with the dagger is to kind of put enemies against the wall like this and then just swing the dagger on them because it's kind of like Tekken or something where they start bouncing off the wall back into you. And so you can get big combos and bigger damage with that. The sword and the ax and the claws all have pretty decent range and combos and damage and all that. So it, those feel pretty natural to use. In terms of the map layout and stuff, um, the rooms are either battles or little events and stuff. And then you pick where you go afterwards. You can tell if there's a tarot card room by the stars, if you can see it up here, above the pathway, there's stars and moons and stuff. This means it's a tarot card room. And then when you go into the tarot card room, you get two choices. You can pick whatever fits your build or your fancy the best. And once you pick that, you keep it until you die or the run's over. But something I didn't know until recently too is there's actually a stand over here where you can offer gold. I think once a day or once a run to, uh, get an extra card. This can be really helpful. This can make you powerful on tough boss missions. And so I prioritize hearts. Honestly, there there are some good cards out there, but I think hearts are the best. And then other stuff that's synergistic to your build afterwards. But I usually prioritize hearts if I can. 
and then each section of combat for a dungeon is only a few rooms and the crusades themselves only last like six to maybe 12 minutes depending on how fast you go even with bosses so you can get through them relatively quickly but other combat tips like i said since you can roll cancel a lot of your stuff get in the habit of that and also don't be afraid to use your curses your fervor is going to recharge pretty quickly from hitting stuff so you can use you know one every couple rooms or use a couple in one room and then you charge it up by you know two or three rooms later and that's without extra stuff like cards and weapons helping you um, for the layouts of the rooms you don't have to break everything you can there are little there's certain things like the flowers and mushrooms and stuff like that in each region which give you resources and there's grass but really you don't have to break everything it's it's kind of a waste of time you're gonna want to but you don't have to do that and I talked about the tarot cards the cost goes up on the the extra purchase depending on the level you're in and then finally for actually we got two more things to talk about so for pathing you can kind of pick whatever you want there's a boss or a mini boss at the end depending on what you're doing and the the things are pretty self-explanatory in terms of pictures so swords are combat the question marks are events stones are stones hearts are hearts there's wood there's bones all that kind of stuff um, you can see shops, obviously, and there. this is a follower node. There are one or two others that I can't remember off the top of my head, but really just pick the pathing that you want, whatever you need. Like, if you need food, go to a food one. If you need, you know, stone, go to a stone one. If you're hurt, go to a health one. Like, they all do different things. They're all beneficial in different ways. And um, let's see. So they talk about that being a shop. This one's important. So you see how there's a thing under it, like a little flag? Sometimes... A node will have this and it tells you of a modifier on that room so for this one you trade a heart for a card so usually when you see the arrows it means you're giving up something to get something so kind of be careful of that because you're gonna walk into this one like I can go to here get some food like I said I usually prioritize seeds over everything so I'll get seeds here although the meat was kind of tempting and then we go here I'm gonna lose a heart to uh, get a card So we got a diseased heart in exchange for one red heart. And so you kind of pick what you need and what you want to do based on that. And then finally, the levels have a type of endless mode. It's like a pseudo soft endless mode, whatever you want to call it, where once you kill the bishop, that is the, the story boss of the area, then every time you run it and you get to the end, instead of fighting the area boss, you can fight a mini boss and then once you beat it you can loop and do it again and so you can just go for as long as you want keep farming keep getting stuff and if you ever want to check out quickly in this endless mode you can actually break the statue of the area boss because normally these reform but after you've killed the area boss and you're in this uh, pseudo endless mode once you break the statue you can just jump in and fight the area boss again and then leave the region you can also use the omnipresent uh, function here with the left trigger, in my case, if you unlock it, and that'll let you teleport out and lose 25% of your stuff. So, that is it for Crusades, and I think it's time to talk about the base. Actually, I have one final tip with the, uh, the Crusades. If you're going to go on a Crusade, make sure that your units are all topped off in terms of faith and food and stuff like that before you go out because they're gonna whine and have issues otherwise so make sure you do that and now we'll talk about the base after the sermon get the prayer in praise be all right it's base time this next part of the video is going to focus on base management, so we have some tips on buildings and followers and how to pick rituals and skills and all that. You don't have to follow this exactly, but this is what has worked for me, as well as some of the mistakes that I ran into. So, to start off, when you are initially getting your base and it's building up and stuff like that, it will take a lot of work from you. So what I mean is, you'll have to build stuff, You'll have to do the farming, you'll have to clean the poop and the vomit 
and it's gonna feel like you have to do a lot of stuff and that's only for honestly the beginning once you get to the third fourth level unlocked your base really begins to become more autonomous meaning you can assign people to clean vomit and poop you can assign people to farm and collect lumber and stone and all that so really late game what you end up doing is just walking around and just emptying stuff so emptying your outhouses picking up items from the box that they give you clearing your offering tables like this is pretty much all you do late game since everyone else is doing stuff for you make sure clean your boxes and stuff like your farming boxes there's a lot of stuff in there and uh, yeah so once everything's super autonomous then that is pretty nice because all you get to really focus on is doing missions or crusades i should say for your followers it's good to have ways to get rid of them so culling them however you want to call it there are a few ways there are rituals you can do there is the death dish which has a pretty high chance of killing them instantly so you can feed them this so you cook this and then tell them to eat it make sure no one else eats it beforehand and then there are as i said there are rituals so you have sacrificial ritual you have ascension ritual and then you have the fighting pits so all three of these are easy ways to get rid of people they just take a few bones and it kills them and you don't have to deal with it anymore and like i said death dish is pretty cheap to make and then the final one would be your missionary so you have a chance of sending them on a mission and then they die and then there's also the demonic circle which i believe can also kill them either way you should have a way to get rid of followers that are either troublesome or old so that's that's the main reason you want to do that for the followers themselves you can give them gifts and do other interactions seeing their thoughts doesn't usually help too much in my experience but you make demands you can collect ties if you get that skill you can give them loyalty and stuff like these you don't need these as much late game because you know you just you're rolling in loyalty or whatever and cash but you can give them gifts too so you can give them necklaces and it's important to decide what necklace they get based on what they're doing so if like they're harvesting you want to give them a nature necklace if they are a janitor for instance like my poop cleaner i give them the feather necklace and then if you have one you care about you can like double their life there's other things too like devotion speed so really pay attention to what the jobs are and then give them a necklace to match and then you get some loyalty which is nice if they are ready to level up there is a little arrow above their head like this if i can talk to this one and then you get some devotion they level up and that means when you sacrifice them and stuff they're worth more and they're stronger and all that so don't feel pressure to interact with them all the time make sure you give them necklaces jails are important if you have dissenters so if your faith gets low some of them start getting pissed off make sure you have a couple jails handy i think two is all i've ever needed i haven't needed more than this and then just jail them and re-educate them immediately and it takes about three days to fix them maybe four but uh, yeah that's how you want to handle them and then if you have a pretty big turnover you can also get quests from them obviously so they talk to you and give you quests that you can do recruit starving followers and then followers pop up and uh, yeah you can deal with that so when you have a high turnover so a few of them die you sacrifice them ascend them whatever make sure you check in to see who's still doing what because you might end up running out of people that for instance gather resources i probably need someone that can get logs because i have no one in here right now and then your farmers too so you can check those out just be aware of what's happening make sure that you're checking in on who's still alive and doing what, and you know periodically make sure you have what you need for resources what's really important here is these so farms and then also mines i did not build mines initially right away and that was a huge mistake it is really good to have a couple of lumber and stone mines i i think you just really need two. the smaller ones break pretty quickly so you have to replace them but um having two of those seems to do the job and keep you stocked on lumber and wood as far as farming efficiency goes it's always good to have a couple uh, fertilizer pits seed pits um, you can do other ways to get fertilizer like dead bodies 
And as far as efficient farming goes, I feel like this is decent enough to get the job done. It might not be the most efficient, but having your watering silo thing in the middle for everyone to work with and then surrounding it with plots, pretty self-explanatory. And then also the harvest totems, which increase growth rate, kind of hard to make it cover everything. And then scarecrows have pretty big range. So they want everything around the scarecrow more or less because the birds do steal pretty frequently. And once you get the automated farming going, that makes life a lot easier because everything you pick up gets put in the boxes, you get seeds and food. Do not skimp on the farms because you need to feed people and feeding goes pretty quickly, or at least the food does. There are other ways to feed them too, like fishing and the fishing ritual, which we'll talk about, but yeah. So as far as other buildings, I feel like two outhouses, especially upgraded, really do the job. This base has sustained as many as 16 without issue, and I've killed a few recently, so that's why it's uh, a bit lower than right now in terms of the number. Um, three refineries, I feel like this is good enough. Refineries give you the high level materials, and usually I have one for each, so one for gold, one for wood, one for stone. That's been doing fine. The offering tables, these are actually really good. So I think you can reliably give one table per person in your village. I've had about eight, but every time I go on a mission and come back, these are full of stuff, so I probably need more. Yeah. In terms of other resources, I really think it's good to rush shelters. You can like mash X. Oh, yeah. So you can mash X to get the devotion if they're uh did I freeze my game? Okay. Yeah, you can mash X to get the devotion and stuff. So you don't have to like stand there and uh old X and stuff like that, but shelter is really good to rush just because for one, these don't collapse and they make your followers feel better and you can also get devotions. So I, I really prioritize these. It's good to have a lot of these. And then in terms of food, fish are nice to have in a pinch, but honestly seeds are what you want. So having seeds is better than pretty much anything else because seeds are sustainable and renewable. So you want those. And as far as food goes for cooking, there are a lot of options you can do. Fishing is good for a lot of uh, food. You can get different bonuses, illnesses, resources and stuff. I think the best food to make is actually the cauliflower chowder. You unlock cauliflower in the third level, but it feeds a decent amount of people. It's easy to get and you can get a lot of it and it you know, feeds them pretty well and they get resources and stuff and it's low illness. So this is a really good food to make. I will make as much of this as I can unless I need something else. Food minigame is pretty easy. Just hit, you know, A or X or whatever when it's over the thing. Um, for the lower level food, you can actually kind of mash it because the bar's bigger. Man, just feed everyone, make sure they're topped off. And uh, yeah, so the last tip for the base is the clock. So you can see the clock in the top right, it's on day 79 for this file, but the clock is really important. It's always running. So if you're on a mission, it's running. When you're running around town, it's running. So you wanna make sure that your clock is something that you are cognizant of because you have to make sure that you're on time for your sermons and make sure that people that are old or whatever and at risk of dying, that you cover them in some way, either sacrificing them or what. And then I guess the final stuff to talk about with the village, because the village is really important, obviously. So having, um, what you call it, having rituals is really good. So as I said, ways to sacrifice them are good. You can pick other rituals that you want that fit your needs, but I really feel like the, the important ones to get are sacrifice, fighting pit, and ascend, just because it gets rid of people that are either troublesome or what. The feasting ritual is really good. If you're out of food, it just takes bones and it feeds everyone in the village. So that's very helpful. The fishing ritual is actually really good too. So you get the ability to get extra fish and stuff when you're fishing. And there's a fishing quest to get crabs and octopus and stuff like that. And this will actually max it very quickly. Like you don't have to do too much in the way of fishing in order to, uh, get all the fish you need if you have the bounty because or the ritual because that's really good um the brainwash ritual is the other good one you get this after level two and it's you can't really make a choice 
you know, you do the quest, you get this one, and this is a very good ritual to have. If you expect to die a lot, this is a good one to pop because then your faith is locked and people don't get pissed off for you dying, which is nice. So those are the rituals I think are good. In terms of the cult itself, doing sermons daily, you want to do this as much as you can. And for crown stuff and fleeces, the fleeces aren't that important. They're, they're cool and they're fun, but honestly, the base one is fine. This is arguably probably the best because you don't have to uh, plan your build around it. If you suck, like if you have the golden fleece and suck, then you just die. Um, the fate fleece, this can kind of lock you out of extra cards. So there's like, these are all good and useful, but honestly the base one is good enough. So don't feel pressured to get other ones. As far as the offerings and doctrines and stuff like that, just get whatever looks the most fun to you. You don't have to follow what I did, but just get what looks the most fun. You know, it's your cult, single player game, all that. But I do think that the ways to get rid of people quickly and easily are the best ones to have, personally. And then as far as talent trees go, I don't have access to the church one, I think, but um, I prioritized weapons. So the same thing for the uh, the totem tree. I will get the the central nodes when they're available because I feel like the central ones are the strongest for each tier. And this goes for the, the church ones as well. And then I prioritize weapons and then curses after. And the reason is because weapons are the most dependable and you get some pretty good ones later on. So you get uh, the Bane ones to start are really good. And then the godly weapons at the top, which are just, you know, a lot of damage are the best ones I would say and then there's a couple of the mid-tier ones are okay but they're not that important so that's it for talent trees I think and then actually for the totem too um, besides the central one I prioritize shelters which I talked about so shelters are over here I prioritize these over the other stuff and then also the mines these are very important to get to so I would say shelters um, farming and then mines, probably in that order. And the refinery is a distant, like, fourth or whatever. So once you get all that up and running, your base is pretty self-sufficient. And you can just focus on doing crusades, which makes life a lot easier. So the tips I've given for this base, this can, like I said, sustain a base of up to probably 20 people pretty easily. Um, I've, I've held 16 with no issue. But, um, yeah. So that is the tips for this, and I guess that's the end of the video here, so I appreciate you watching. I will have other videos on Cult of the Lamb coming up and stuff, so if there's any things you want me to cover, just let me know, but I'll talk about weapons and maybe bosses and stuff like that, and builds eventually. But that's it for this one. Let me double check my notes. Pretty sure we're done. Yeah, we're done. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.